Listeners, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Yeah, welcome. We uh, we should thank our sponsor before we get into the show, Hayfla. Hayfla offers a wide range of products and solutions for the woodworking and furniture making industries from hinges and drawer slides to connectors and dowels, sandpaper, wood glue, shop carts, and everything in between. Exclusive product lines such as Lux LED lighting and Slido door hardware ensure that every project you create is built to last. Learn more at Hayfla.com. Of course, maybe not right now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hayfla.com is back up. I think we talked about this last week and maybe even the week before. They uh, they had a um, like a ransomware attack on their global site or something. I guess whatever the website that's based in Germany. A breach. Yeah. Um, so uh, they shut everything down. I guess, to minimize the damage to their whatever web infrastructure. And um, so now the website is back up. Um, so you can look at the entire catalog. You can't log in or order from the website yet. Um, but you can place an order with your salesperson. So so you still can do it that way. Give Rich a call. Yeah, if you're in... Uh, I wonder how big Rich is. Territory? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, Monmouth County. I think he goes down to Ocean County too. All right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, check them out. Help them out because they they just got they just got crushed for two weeks. What a shame! Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, no revenue for two weeks. Oh man! On top of you know, <laughs> on top of the. The angst and all the extra work of oh yeah, I'm sure the ship. you know when something like that happens to a big company like Hayfla, you know you have to bring in all kinds of security, cybersecurity experts, and you know forensic uh, whatever. They got to find yeah. out who did it, why, what you know what damage was done, what may or may not have been compromised. They said all the user data was untouched, so. Not that we got anything that you can take anyway. <laughs> they, they, can, they can take our debt away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of debt, I guess we have uh, a small announcement to make. Yeah. We, uh, I'm looking at the waveforms here. They're flip-flopped. So it says I'm Rob and it says oh, that you're yeah. me. Um, so we... What's the best way to say this? We signed the papers to purchase a edge bander. Yeah. Um, we haven't received it yet, but we should have it in hopefully about a month. Um, it's being being built right now, I guess, or or maybe it, it may even be on its way across the ocean um, from Spain where it's made. It's a European. Yeah. Um so, yeah, we should have it by mid-March, they're saying. We know how that goes. Yeah, we hope it's not like the last uh, European purchase. What's that? The van. Oh, yeah. Well, that's made well, that in America. America, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, a uh, Sahisa Compact Edge Bander. Um, it's got... It's got all the bells and whistles, really. Yeah. Um. Not quite all of them, but all the ones that we need, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got pre-milling. It's got corner rounding. It's got, uh, obviously, your trimming and scraping and buffing. Um, it's got glue release spray and a cleaning spray. So it hits the, the material with glue release before it goes in. And then on the way out, I guess right before the buffers, it hits it with like a cleaning agent. Um, so, you know, the stuff should come out like... Should be ready to rock and roll when it comes out yeah. of this machine. If if it's not, it means there's something's going wrong. <laughs> it will be. It better to, damn well be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to file anything. <laughs> no, God. Yeah, I mean, I did that little bit of edge banding yesterday for the banquettes for Jim, and uh, you know, it's just, 
It's just a pain in the ass. And it, yeah, do, it doesn't yeah. look the way, you know, it should, really. We can't get into that line of work without the machine. Right. Yeah. I mean, and we're looking to expand what we do, and that's part of it. Yeah. I think we talked about it, you know, probably before the move on the podcast, but, you know, if we can pivot a a, a portion, probably a large portion, the majority of, of the business into, um, you know, commercial mill work and, uh, you know, things like frameless kitchens. That's the kind of stuff that can subsidize the more artsy, if you will, projects that. <laughs> that the, was the word. I was gonna use. The profit margins are just not the same <laughs> no. um, because people, you know, there's a ceiling as to what people are willing to spend and just because they want something artsy doesn't mean that they realize that yeah. it should cost significantly more right. than just some plain Jane BS from, you know, Joe cabinet maker down the street. Not everybody wants a $20,000 cabinet. Right. And even at 20,000, we're not getting rich. We're just barely paying the bills. Yeah. Um, I mean, it had to be a pretty nice, it'd be a nice cabinet for 20, but um, I mean, we've built some, Twenty thousand dollar yeah. cabinets, and it's not like we were like you know, we're not swimming in money afterwards. It's, no, rubbing it's, our hands together like, oh <laughs> man, look how much profit we made on this job. It's because it's twenty two thousand dollars worth of work. All right? Yeah, <laughs> that's why. Because we go into ah, oh, come on, let's make this nicer right here. Come on, let's do this. Yeah. Come on, let's do that. Um. So yeah, I mean, I don't enjoy. I don't um enjoy that type of work any less than like the commercial stuff any less than anything else no you try um, to make it super nice anyway yeah i just like you know i like cutting stuff and putting it together yeah um, and using nice machines really helps the process oh I mean, yeah it makes everything easier um so yeah it'll be a, a welcome addition to the shop you know it's uh, it's a lot of money yeah, and we're hunting down proper dust collection for it right now. Yeah, uh, which is another thing. Looking at, well, and we'll know for sure tomorrow, I think, uh, 2200 CFM of dust collection. Yeah, it's, what would you say, five five-inch ports it's got? Yep. I mean, that's that's a ton. I, yeah. guess, they, I guess they're individualized, you know, whereas the, the old Brant, has got one. that one yeah. where it's just sort of like everything comes through that one uh, chase in the machine. Yeah, you can see. Um, let me see. I pull it up here. We can look at it. Where these ports um, probably go directly to the source of the, the cutting and scraping. Yeah. Um, let's see. Man, I'm going to turn the brightness up on this. There we go. Let's see. Jill... Yeah, because if you've ever looked inside uh, um, an edge bander, they could be a little messy on the inside after it. Oh yeah, been operating. Yeah, so you can see here. So oh, this is yeah. the in feed. So this is your pre mill. You got one five inch going straight to the pre milling units. It's got and there two are those pre milling heads four back there. Yeah, so like. All the way back here, three of them go into one. So that's mm -hmm. probably the scraping. This is your front and back trim goes to one. But then it, it maybe it's just me, but it looks like these are two more. Oh, yeah, look, this is by itself. That's by itself. Mm -hmm. This, I don't know what that is. It's right where the two sections meet, so it's kind of obscured. Yeah. What could that be, though? So you got one port for front trim, one port for back trim. Oh, you know what? This must be top and bottom trimming. Mm -hmm. And front and back trimming are over here. We can't really see it. Yeah, so this pre-milling, I guess, uh, we uh, maybe not everybody knows about, like, uh, edge banders. Um, not that we know really anything <laughs> about edge banders. But so pre-milling... Um, Basically, what you do is you tell the machine uh, what you're running. So, you know, you say we're using, um, oh, look at that. Somebody's 
Camp Lejeune. They think I was at Camp Lejeune. They want to give me money. <laughs> um, you tell the machine that, okay, we're running one millimeter edge banding. The thickness of the edge banding. Right. Um, so you set it to one millimeter. <clears throat> when you run in a piece that's, uh, let's say it's a cabinet side, it's 24 inches deep, and you're edge banding the face. When you put it in, it will actually mill off one millimeter of material before it applies the edge banding. Right. Um, this way, you know, if you've ever cut inside parts that also need to have the ends edge banded, like like uh, parts that are captive between two things, you have to do the math <laughs> and say, okay, it needs to be 22 and a half, but I got two pieces of edge banding, so it's going to be 23 and, and 15 sixteenths light. Yeah, because we're not using millimeters still. That that even yeah compounds it. Um, and just you know, the human error. You set the saw to to one thing, and if the blade's got a little bit of wobble or you know whatever, um, so this it it will remove it. And not only it does it just subtract that, so it's good for the dimensionality, but um, it prepares the edge to accept yeah. the edge. It's banding. super clean. Yeah, it's a diamond. It's like two counter-rotating diamond um, thingamabobbers. A diamond blaze with ruby tips. Yeah, it better be for the price. <laughs> Spinning on a golden arbor. <laughs> There's actually tiny humans in there that... So let's see. Let's go over the specs here. We got uh, edge banding material, melamine, PVC, ABS, veneer, solid wood strips, so, so, um, it'll do 0.4 to three millimeter on, on, uh, what do they call it? Like coiled material. Yeah. So your, your PVC, your melamine, ABS, I guess PP is what, polypropylene? I, you got me on that. And wood veneer. Then it'll, it'll do solid wood strips. So you can put a five millimeter solid wood edge. On a shelf. Yeah, that's um, that's almost a quarter of an inch. Yeah. So that, obviously, you can't put that on a coil because it'll just break. Um, but you can, you know, do, you can make them or, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can buy them. But. Um, and then feed it in. Right. I think there's a different, like, sort of magazine that they go into. Um, panel thicknesses, minimum eight millimeters. So that's what a third of an inch basically Yeah, up to 60 millimeters. So that's, uh, almost that's two and a half inches, just under two and a half inches. Yeah. Let's see my, my, uh, my math, my head math as, uh, Chris used to call it. 50.8 would be two. 60 millimeters is 2.362 inches. So it's so almost two and, two and three eighths. eighths. Yeah. You probably eke that out. Length mm. minimum 120 millimeters. So that's uh, five inches, just under five inches. And max unlimited, obviously. With minimum 75 millimeters. So that's less, less than three inches, which is pretty good because a lot of the other oh, ones yeah. that we looked at were four. Um, you know, I was I just did stuff yesterday that was two and three quarter. And again, you know, you might be able to eke out a little bit smaller than that. Uh, working speed, meters per minute. Ten. Ten, eight. What the hell does that mean? Ten meters. Every eight minutes. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. No. Oh, maximum minimum? Oh. Uh, could that is that what could that mean? Maybe. Meters minimum? I don't know. Maximum and minimum? I don't know. Corner rounding unit capacity in millimeters, ten to sixty millimeters. We uh went with the one point five millimeter corner rounding, I think. Let me see. Buh, 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 1.5. Yeah, so 1.5 millimeter corner rounding will do one millimeter and two millimeter. And then, you know, you can get other uh, cutters for that. 
Yeah, that's those are the most common. Yeah, one millimeter will probably be what we use most often, um, and even like half millimeter. Yeah, <clears throat> pre milling cutter height. I don't know what these numbers. Why there's two thirty sixty five, working pressure blah blah blah, twelve point five kilowatts. Three phase. Oh, this is fifty hertz. We, we don't have 50 hertz here. We got 60 hertz. And it's uh, 14 foot 6 by 25 by 55. And it weighs 2,000 pounds. It's a big boy. Yeah. What the hell? What's it say under packing over there? Uh, gross weight. Nice wooden crate. Yeah. That's going to take some time. How is it? How is this? Oh, because I guess they take off some of the things. So the crate itself is only 3930 by 880 by 1800. Yeah, the the spool holder probably yeah. and the arm that's underneath it is probably not sticking out. So we'll have to get some um, machinery skates. <laughs> that way we can get it in the... Um, Let's see how big and too bad the crate isn't less than 10 feet. Yeah. At least it'll be in a crate so that we can. I don't know why this thing keeps jumping around like this. 39, 30 millimeters. Yeah. That's 12 feet, 10 and three quarter inches. Hmm. Yeah, close. Uh, so. Turn the scroll wheel like once and it goes like, see, it's like separated into yeah. one page right now. It's weird. How do I change pages? Huh, well, let me go to the next page. I'll pull it back over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's actually... I could see that much better. So, it's got... Feeding station. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Tray for the roll of edging material. Timer-controlled automatic feeding, allowing the precise adjustment of the in-feed surplus and minimizing the waste of edging material. Pneumatic pre-cutting guillotine up to 3 millimeter PVC ABS edge edges thickness. Um... That's like when you use the strips, you got to cut them, you know, mm -hmm. you cut them to length. Longer and reinforced infeed fence, feeding tray with non-return tape system. So I guess uh, you can't go backwards. Yeah. Pre-milling PF2. Two HF motors, the first 1.1 kilowatt. It's weird how the Europeans use a comma instead of a, a, a decimal point. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, 1.1 kilowatt rotating CCW and the second three quarter kilowatt rotating CW with pneumatic pressure control providing optimum finish. New air blow nozzles for removing dust. That's clockwise and counterclockwise for you uninitiated. Uh, I didn't put two and two together on that. Uh, milling heads with welded diamonds. Standard tooling. <laughs> No rubies. No. <laughs> Glue application unit M2-NS. New design with improved thermodynamics, granting a shorter heating time with less power consumption, 2.5 kilowatts. Full Teflon, trademark, or actually. <laughs> yeah, I think that is R, a trade yeah, name. R is it? registered trademark, yeah. right? Coating of the whole assembly. Injection of melted glue at the upper and lower points of the application roller where heating elements are built in to maintain optimum working temperature. Automatic temperature control by electronic thermostat preventing the scorching of glue when the machine is idle. 1.5 kilogram capacity glue tank, new glue regulating gate. Yeah, that's something that's not working so well on the brand. Oh, yeah. Then uh, we move into the pressure rollers. Three rollers exerting pressure on the edge band in order to achieve its adhesion onto the panel edge. First roller is driven and the second one is of smaller diameter and idle. What about the third? Seco numerical counter for unit adjustments 
to three millimeter edge or five millimeter strips. Optional, automatic positioning at two preset positions. End trimming, single support, single carriage, single through shaft HF motor, 12,000 RPM, two TCT saw. I don't know what that is. I don't either. Something carbide tooth. Performing the front and rear trim triple? cut. Triple cut tooth. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Um, performing the front and rear trim cut cycles. Soft and precise movement of the carriage. Slip on precision prismatic guides. Tooling 2X TCT saw blades set at diameter 100 by 32 by 3, something, something like that. New dust collector system. Something I never realized until we got this edge banner was that the the trimming units are actually like circular saw blades. Yeah. I never yeah. never looked at it at Tom's. No, I never did either. In fact, in, uh, you know, it was a big pain in the ass, this thing not working well. But we did learn quite a bit about the mechanics of the machines. The school of hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> we are students. Top and bottom trimming unit. Two separate units for the machining of excess of the edge band. Machining of the excess of the edge band along the upper and lower edges of the panel. Two HF motors, 12,000 RPMs, blah, blah, blah. With milling cutter heads with TC inserts. Tungsten carbide. Mm. Tungsten carbide tooth, I think, is TCT. There you go. Roller type tracers for work with high gloss and 3D effect panels and edges. Hmm. Tooling, milling cutters with tungsten carbide changeable blades. Corner rounding. Yeah. Designed to round the four corners of the panel edged with two millimeter band in order to achieve its complete finishing up to 60 millimeters. Oh, and height. Okay. Single carriage, single motor. Blah, blah, blah. Tracer thing. Minimum length of the panel when using corner rounding is 200 millimeters. Radius scrapers, designed to give perfect finishing touch of the radius of the PVC edging after top and bottom trimming. Roller type horizontal and vertical tracers with Seco digital counters for precise, easy adjustment and cleaning by air blow nozzles. Extraction system with PVC ABS waste collector. Then you got the glue scraper, designed yeah. to remove possible rests of glue on the top and bottom surface of the panel. Two blade holders with independently adjustable vertical copying devices. Air blow nozzles for tracer cleaning. Then you got your buffing unit designed to remove possible residues of glue. Restores the PVC ABS edge color and polish it after trimming and scraping. Two independent units with tilting motors. Nice control panel. Yeah, well, this is the seven. We got an upgrade. We did. So here's our up. Here's the well standard configuration: HF motors controlled by independent electronic inverters, elect electrical parts, meaning blah blah blah. Dust collectors on all working stations. Pressure beam with closer wheels. Extension roller support for big size workpieces. Air blow nozzles for tracers cleaning. Cabin housing all. Cabin housing, cabin housing all working units. Oh, cabin housing all working units. Yeah. yeah, like on ours, the glue pot, the guillotine, the pressure rollers, they're outside of the cabin. <laughs> yeah. Just where you could just get sucked in there where they could get right. dusty and Keep dirty. Your hands away. Yeah. <laughs> from from the guillotine. <laughs> so we got this is the this is showing like, okay, you got pre milling, guillotine, uh what the hell is that? Pressure roller. Front and back trim, top and bottom trim, and... Is that corner rounding? Oh, yeah, corner rounding. That's standard. Then, options. We got radius scraper, we got glue scraper, and we got buffing unit. So that's all three of those. Then we got, um, I guess, upgraded cutters on the pre-milling. That's where the rubies come in. Yeah. <laughs> They actually took them out of King Tut's yeah. uh, sarcophagus. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, a panel width reduced to 60 millimeters. Hmm. I didn't see that. That would have been something nice to ask for. 
Um, extra large infeed fence. I like that. Non-stick agent spray station at entrance. Cleaning agent spray station at exit. Nesting type vertical tracers. I don't know what that is. Me either. Cabin lights of, LED, of the LED type. And a 10-inch panel touchscreen. Oh. And what was the other one standard? Seven? Seven. Nice. So the 7-inch one looks like it's built into the side of the machine. Yeah. The 10-inch one sticks off the side, I, I believe. You like the Mercedes van. Yeah. That big touchscreen. I think that's an 11. So, yeah. I don't know if you wanted to hear all about all the specs of that Edge Banner, but there you go. But that's what you get when you... Um, when you tune in. Yeah. My favorite feedback of the of the new year as was uh, somebody who tuned into last year's episode number two of uh, Period Furniture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this one word critique. Jim Rogers, I think his name was. I responded to him today. I said, "Thanks, Jim. Tune in next week for more, more uh, whatever, more excitement." Just comments on YouTube, boring. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> We're going to talk about the 12 periods of American furniture, yeah. <laughs> Scintillating. Uh, people got some free time on their hands. <laughs> I'm going to comment on this video and hurt these guys' feelings. Yeah, no. He commented, but he didn't, didn't hurt our feelings. No, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, actually our machinery salesman, Brian is going to come on the show in uh, like two weeks. Yeah. He's a pretty cool dude. Yeah. Got a long history. Um, a lot of experience in the trades, Mm -hmm. um, using these machines, um, Doing real edge banding specific things like elevator panels and yep and that kind of stuff. Um. So yeah, I mean we're we uh. Um. What was I gonna say? Well, you're chatting with him. He said, "Hey, man, I, can I be on the show?" Oh yeah, yeah. And actually, even the first day he was here. You know, because he came originally just to look at the existing edge band. That's right. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this he would make good guests for the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil, you know, his story and everything, but, you know, he ran a, a big shop, like really mm-hmm. big. Like we're talking yeah. like over 100,000 square feet, I believe. Two, yeah. I think yeah. he said 200,000 square feet. Um, what did he say? He put on like 13 miles a day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. But yeah, it was, uh, I even told him, I was like, that's funny because I was going to ask you to come on. Um, but he's run a lot of these Sahisa edge banders, um, you know, in that shop and, you know, he's, he loves them. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good portion of why we went with the, the machine and, yeah. uh, and the new machine and that brand machine. Uh huh. Because um, as we've learned and we've been told time and time again, even a new edge bander can be a little bit finicky, a mm-hmm. little persnickety of a machine. I mean, if you've never seen one and you open up those doors, yeah. there's, it's like a, a science lab going on in there. Especially like this old machine. Because um, nothing's labeled at all. No. I mean, not that... The, they're like labeled in these new ones, but it's just, I don't know. I think the old ones are even more confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have a setup. We'll, we'll tape it or, you know, whatever you call it nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you, we'll record it uh-huh. so that we'll have a reference to the setup and everything like that. Yeah. And we have Brian as a resource, you know, mm-hmm. we can call him and say, Hey, um, you know, it's not the, the top isn't trimming right. What do we do? And he's going right. to say, okay, just go in there, turn this knob. Um, you know, we, we could have gotten a good deal on this, um, BAC Akron 1100 edge bander from Alliance Machinery up in Massachusetts. You know, it was a 
the 2019 that was never used. It was sold, and then they couldn't take uh, possession of it, whatever. The people, they couldn't take it, so they... It's a school, I thought. Yeah. Um, Alliance bought it back, but, you know, we said to ourselves, it's like buying a car. Like, if you can get a good deal on a Ferrari... What good does it do you if nobody in your town can work on it? You know, because <laughs> because it's gonna break, <laughs> right? So you're gonna call in a mechanic from out of town anytime that you have a little issue. Yeah, that's the value added. Yeah, with this particular machine, right? So he said might not be the same on the same level as a BAC Edge Bander, but you know we're not going to be doing thousands of feet a day. You know, mm -hmm. there's shops that run an edge bander eight, 10 hours a day. They might do two shifts a day of edge banding all day. Right. Right. Um, that's not going to be us. You know, it, it'll, I mean, we may get to the point where we run it every day, but it's mm -hmm. not going to run all day every day. Yeah. Uh, if we get to that point um, within these next five years that we're in this shop, <laughs> then, you know, you could always get a new machine um, if it, if things work out that that insane. You know, you don't want to underbuy. That was also a fear because there yeah. was a, that Flexi, it was called. The, yeah. he Flexi, Flexi P. Flexi, Flexi P, yeah. Which was, um, which was nearly half the price. Um, but let's see if, if we can look at the um, differences. So right off the bat, you can see how much smaller it is. It does yeah. the same um, thicknesses of of rolled edge banding, but it doesn't do the strips right. of wood. And it, it only goes up to 50 millimeters in height. A um, little bit less on the, on the width, actually, 120 millimeters, I guess, just because it's a smaller machine. Mm-hmm. The speed is a seven. Not ten. Not ten slash eight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, corner rounding doesn't have it. Does have pre milling. Corner rounding's big. Yeah. Yeah, like if you're gonna be making doors on it, you want corner rounding. Otherwise, you're gonna be doing all that by hand. So it's only got two pressure rollers. Um. You know, you can see the glue scraper is a lot chintzier looking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like everything else. You go back to the car analogy. The, generally speaking, they're saving money on, in the fabrication of these things. It's only got a six-inch control panel? Come on. <laughs> I, re I refuse to work on a six-inch panel. Yeah. Extension roller support instead of fixed. Yeah, so this one was like super bare bones. Um, no no radius scrapers, just glue scrapers. It had a buffing unit, nesting type vertical tracers, whatever the hell that means, and LED cabin lights. Mm. But that was it. Um, no glue release spray, which, you know, you get into do a melamine. Yeah. You might not need it, but... When they start coming out with glue on them, you're going to wish you had it. Yeah, these are, I mean, luckily we had some experience working uh, over at Tom's mm -hmm. running a, a good edge bander. And and we still had to do work on all of those things. Yeah. Nothing came out of his edge bander that you didn't have to touch. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe just like, yeah, just like a cabinet side you sometimes would be. Yeah, but you had to you had to hit those edges. Everything mm -hmm. had to be filed. Everything had to be cleaned. You had to wipe off all the glue. You had to bust out the mek. And, mm -hmm. Um, so otherwise we wouldn't have known what we were didn't know. Right. Uh, we would say, well, maybe this is enough. And um, this machine can take the pur glue. Oh, that's right. Which is um. I forget. Brian was explaining it to us. We had heard it from Ezra over at Timber. Let's see. 
Yeah. Uh, wasn't he saying that, you know, it blends with, you know, it's really thin glue line and it, so you don't have to like change out uh, like colors, colors and, and stuff, stuff like yeah, that. It's got like uh, the reactive temperature is much higher. So like it uh, once it sets, it doesn't remelt at the mm -hmm. same temperature. Let's see. Reactive PUR hot melt adhesives currently represent the highest quality level in edge banding. Come on, load. This block prison we're in. Um, PUR hot melts are the right choice whenever adhesives are required that create a zero bond line that are highly resistant to heat, cold, water, and chemicals. What is very important when using PU slash PUR adhesives is the subs subsequent purging of the adhesive melt tank and applicator as once cured. Unlike EVA adhesive, it will not remelt. For this reason, the edge banner must always be cleaned with a suitable PU cleaner, such as Joe Watt 93094, blah, 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 blah. It's good stuff. Apparently. So we've, uh, we've given our audience a little bit of a uh, taste of edge banding 101. Yeah. Sort of like a prerequisite course. Here we go. PUR uses a much thinner application of adhesive than compared with EVA. 10 to 12 milliliters? Can't ML? Be, can't be milliliters. 10 to 12 milliliters what? Per foot? I don't know. 10 to 12 milliliters versus 25 to 35 milliliters per, per EVA. So, you know, two and a half to three times less. This thinner application of adhesive, along with its reactive properties, is what gives PUR its flexibility. In testing, PUR has extremely high flex test values, often in excess of 1,000 flexes. Thousand flexes. Interesting. Flexing, I don't know, even know what that means. <laughs> Flexing what and which way? <laughs> All right. So if anybody out there needs edge banding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely something that we want to do is offer like edge banding service because, um, you know, we're gonna have this nice machine. Might as well run it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. According to Brian, this, th these Sahisa machines will run all day, every day for a long time. Yeah. Like, you know, decades. Yeah, they're they're made to go. They're made to run. It's like a sport bike. It's made to go. It's like your body. The worst thing you can do is not use it. That's right. Um, that's when things start to break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first time you try to use something, <laughs> yeah, it's all stiff, <laughs> crusted up. <laughs> oh man, how are the reels going? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, the one I posted today, it's like up there 1,500. Oh, no, wow. Even more. 2,600. Nice. So if you haven't haven't uh, seen it yet, because this is coming out tomorrow, check oh, out yeah. the reel I put up cutting in an outlet box with the Lamello Zeta P2. Those are some hot tool tips. Yeah. It could be used for anything. Lamello hasn't said anything yet. I don't know why. Yeah. Let me see if they even saw it. Uh, T oh. Tips and tricks. Yeah. They, um, I can't see if they saw it, but I bet they, I bet you they did. They, uh, I don't know. I don't think they like me. <laughs> don't take it personally. Yeah. We took a nice ride up to Jersey City today. Yeah. Forgot all about that. Yeah, so this morning we... Um, Went uh, through India Square. Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, a banquet to deliver to our buddy Jim Jamal for Dull Boy Mexican Restaurant. Yeah, that's, I, I don't understand that name. Me neither. Let's see if they have a... Um, they call it a cantina. I'm going to be. Oh, no. No. 
It's old boy cocktail bar. Chill brick walled bar serving unique takes on classic American dishes plus an array of cocktails. Oh, okay. So that's not Mexican. I thought it was. And it's in Jersey City, right? Wasn't he saying it's right down the block? Yeah, the other place is a Mexican place called uh, Orale. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Look, they got the pupa. Man, I'm so hungry right now. Oh, what is that? Bar is that brie? Brie with cranberries and mm, walnuts. Mm. With that double burger. Ooh. Yeah, so that was like a 16-foot... Oh, they have an Instagram. I have to follow them on Instagram. Um, a 16-foot banquette that was in two pieces. So we brought that up. Um, then when we left, the song Pulaski Skyway came on by Clutch, and then we literally got onto the Pulaski Skyway. Yeah, yeah that was... What would they call it? What would you call that? Um... Not prophetic, but uh, it was, uh, I can't think of the word. Yeah, profound? Yeah. It's like fate almost. Yeah. Which that song is, you know, in reference to the Pulaski Skyway. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by the title. <laughs> so, yeah, we dropped that stuff off the gym. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you never know. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to be doing another banquet for these folks also own a restaurant called Orale, which is a Mexican restaurant. I thought Dull Boy was Mexican for some reason. I don't know. I figured that they had all Mexican restaurants, but yeah, uh, it's a 47 foot banquet. Uh, going to be the same style, uh, basically arms on either end and we're going to move it in one piece. Yep. Banquet. Straight down the thing. <laughs> so, so six, six, okay. eight foot sections. The whole reason we moved into the new shop. Yeah. It's going to go almost all the way across. Yeah. Yeah. What's the shop? Uh, 70 feet. Uh, Yeah. That's the outside dimension. Yeah. I think it's 68. It's like basically like the walls are like a foot thick. Yeah. Yeah, corner to corner. So that'd be good. Hopefully we get to start that soon because, um, you know, we got all these bids out that are piling up for. Yeah, it's usually feast and famine. Yeah. Well, we're just getting out of that holiday lull. Not even lull, it's just, well, I guess it is lull. People don't want you in their house. They, yeah. you know, they pause all projects because. And you know, we got to start soon. Oh yeah. The boxes. Yeah. We got that. You know, we got, um, all that other stuff that's yeah. coming down the pike. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a nice big work surface to lay out all those glued up boxes on. Yeah, oh, yeah, so after gyms, we went to Home Depot, picked up a little work table to see, you know, if it's even any good. Um, what is it, 24 by 62? Yeah. Husky brand, adjustable height with, like, a little crank. That's the cool part about it. Yeah, with a, you know, wood top. It's like a a trestle trestle style base. Yeah, steel. Yeah. Nice casters. Yeah, it rolls around. Um, it's nice. I'm impressed with it. You know, I, the bar is set pretty low. Yeah. You know? Well, we got burned on like that Craftsman <laughs> toolbox, which was probably like 160 bucks or something. Yeah. This thing was three, you know, 300 bucks after tax to 298 or something. Um, but I, I, I think it's worth it. I do too. You couldn't um, build it for that. No, we already put it into service. Yeah. We worked out the the last of uh, the the Rumson Country Club. Uh, club. Oh yeah, that's a big uh, big job. That uh, I mean, I got pretty close to two hundred thousand. Yeah, by by the end of it, yeah. um, was it forty five linear feet on the one, and then thirty six 
Yeah, on the other. On the other. So, yeah. Teak. Sapili. Um, so, yeah, that'd be cool. You know, one's upstairs. The smaller bar is upstairs, sort of uh, exposed to the elements. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a covered. So, it's not totally outdoors, but it's, you know, I guess. Well, outdoors, covered. but under a roof. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming it faces the river. Yeah, we would hope so. Yeah. Um, That's bar 109 that faces the river. <laughs> That's just bar 108. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we got we got these drawings and they were they were great cuz uh the first the first thing you run into is they don't scale up correctly. So, you know, they they don't have a lot of dimensions on them on the plan. So you have to try and extrapolate what all the real dimensions are, even using my architect scale, which has three, what, six, six different. yeah, and they're so it's double sided. So oh, I think 12. there's twelve yeah. different scales, all the way from like three thirty seconds to one inch. I couldn't get anything to line up. So you had then you have to do math. It's like all right. Two inches equals 2.73 feet. And mm-hmm. So you have to wind up approximating everything. So that's what we did. We spelled it all out. But it's a little annoying when you try and, you know, come up. You can't pull a single measurement off the drawing. Who was it? Keith was telling us that somebody, I think it was Chad, Chad's client. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we were talking about this on the podcast or what. The client was like, you made this thing and it's like 12 inches or something. And Chad's like, no, it's eight inches. They were using an architect scale to measure it <laughs> on, like, you know, the two, uh, yeah. <laughs> one and a half scale. Yeah. It's like uh, that great scene in This Is Spinal Tap uh, where the Stonehenge comes down. Oh, I haven't, you, I haven't you know, seen it in so long. Okay, so... They they want this uh, backdrop uh, model of Stonehenge to come down while they're playing this song. So they did like a napkin sketch, and then and it comes tiny. down. It's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he said it was supposed to be twelve feet. Oh it's like no, you put twelve inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. But anyway, the, the, the work table work, you know, it's a, it raises up. So it's a nice height to work at standing. Mm-hmm. I think it goes up to like 42 or something like that. Or, yeah. Or, um, yeah. Like it, it was nice with the computer on there too, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, try not to bring the computer onto the shop too much, but. Right. Now while we're working, especially. Yeah. So. But uh, maybe. I was dicking around with the lamello and stuff. I had it all the way up there. Mm-hmm. And it was a, uh, you know, it's good if you have to work at with something and be like looking at it. Yeah, with your eyes right on it. Yeah, you know, you don't want to like sand something tall at forty two inches, but <laughs> something flat, maybe yeah, if you have to do yeah. a lot of them. Um, that doesn't ha- not sanding where you have to really bear down. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be good for hand sanding, like little. Yeah, it'd be nice. It's nice just to be able to change things up, too, if you do a lot of repetitive work. Yeah. You know, change those muscles that you're using in your back and shoulder blades a little bit. Yeah, we'll remember that when we get into the boxes. (laughs) That's exactly what I'm thinking. So that material showed up um, on Tuesday. Yeah, oh, cooch. Got 12 boxes, 12 50-pound boxes of wood. Yeah, um, Alan, our UPS guy, he was happy that we uh, jumped out there into the truck. And, He's like, oh, yeah, thanks for the help. I'm like, people, what? like, really, like, let you carry all this stuff in by yourself? I know. Yeah, we put it on our Hayfla, um materials cart and yeah. rolled it right in. I was thinking, uh, oh, excuse me, since we're probably not going to get into that for... I don't know, at least another couple weeks. Um, we could put it on a little pallet or something and maybe put it up 
up like over there. Oh yeah, above the the hallway, up in our little loft. Yeah, our little above uh, restroom loft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, hopefully if, the floor is still intact. Dave put about that ten thousand holes up there. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny. It's like we've been here working for how long since the electric work, electrical work's been done? Uh, uh, it's been, you know, probably a month since they finished. Uh, I mean, I won't say a day, but a week doesn't go by that we don't see something like kind of like half-assed that... <laughs> like, come on, Dave. <laughs> today i mean it's little stuff but still it's like the washer's in the wrong place or yeah. the labels are wrong or crooked or oh you know just all these little things yeah things to make the neuroses uh, <laughs> flare up yeah it's funny brian actually just texted me said you have a link for the podcast of course we do yeah See, he's on an Android, so I sent him Spotify. Oh, yeah. New podcast listener. Yeah. Uh, I sent the wife out for some... Uh, I'm not having soup for dinner tonight. No? I'm going to have uh, some pizza. Oh, nice. From yeah. l &B? Oh, I wish. Yeah, I, I've been, but I've been wanting it ever since. I saw Keith. Uh, where are you getting it from? Uh, that place that we had it, um, you know, over there by uh, Food Town. Remember when we went in there that day? Oh, uh, yeah, it was Romeo's. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, I said, just get it over there. They mm -hmm. have a good grandma's. They have a good margarita. Those are the two that I like the most. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, you know... If you haven't had it for so long, it's everything's going to taste good, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that goes the other way, though. Uh, You're like, oh, it's not as good as I remember. Like, do I really like pizza this much, or is it? Oh, yeah. Always makes me think about, like, when you go camping, mm. and you, you'd be really hungry because there's no snack in it, and I go, oh, man, these are the, this is the best food I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Like sand in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all gritty and <laughs> twig inside of it. Right. It drops on the ground. You still eat it. Oh, yeah. So that's all the big news. The Edge Bander. Mm hmm. Um, you know, we talked about uh, our little adventure today out going up to Jersey City. We didn't really expound upon Little India or whatever it is, but I didn't know that um, there was a whole section of Jersey uh, City that was like a like a Little India. Yeah, what do they call it? Uh, was it Indian Village, Indian I think Town? Indian Indi Village, yeah. Like part of Journal Square. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did, I knew about that, but I had never driven through it. There's a lot of good looking food oh, places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it was really hopping. There a lot of new signage. Uh so you could see that there's a lot of new stuff going in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're building all kinds of giant buildings. Mm -hmm. Um, some of which I'm sure we might have a hand in. <laughs> yeah, and and just down the block from Jim's, they they're putting up like a sixty and a forty unit uh tall. Uh, floor 60 and, and 40 story mm -hmm. building. Uh, I was shocked. Yeah, that's tall. 60 stories is tall. Yeah, because it, what are those regular buildings? They're five stories. Um, yeah, like what was our bowl? Mm. That was maybe eight stories. Yeah, but like all those like older buildings there, they're they're like three oh. to five, right? Yeah, most of those were like, yeah, two, three. And then you got those huge, those are like skyscrapers there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, you know, the urban, the center expands. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, all the Manhattan, there's, you can't put, you can't put a new skyscraper in Manhattan. So no. you gotta go across the Hudson. The island's going to sink soon. It's too much weight. That's if the aliens don't get us first. <laughs> 
we didn't we didn't talk about the alien balloons. Yeah, I've been shooting down the aliens. It's uh, they just don't want us to know. Above, uh, out there, beyond Lake Huron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the White House did issue a statement. I don't know if to take my face value or not, but they say there were no aliens involved. Yeah, they won't tell us what it is. But they they're saying that it's not aliens. I don't know. You believe that? Could be people from the secret space force just trying to get back. Yeah, whistleblowers, I, secret space force whistleblowers. Wonder if Taylor Swift has a hand in any of that. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> the wife's texting me, sending me on a post work errand. Oh god! Gonna have to go to the drugstore across the street, pick up some Drano. Oh man said the tub is running slow upstairs yep that's because women shed hair out of their head yeah you know, like yeah. A, like an animal yeah and she's got all she's got a huge mane of hair um so that's where i'm going after work i don't, I don't know if i can walk past that snack aisle you got a lot of stuff in there without without getting something for the ride home i mean because i'm gonna have to go to the register right you Get know the pocky <laughs> the Pocky? Worth, a, worth a try hey hey Pocky way they're good pretty sure they're Japanese I ne- cause I never heard of it I've had them yeah let's see what is Pocky what is Pocky not a new, another New Jersey thing like no. Taylor ham or something Pocky like that Pocky is a Japanese sweet snack food produced by the Izaki Glico food company Pocky was first sold in 1966 it was invented by Yoshiaki Koma consists of coated biscuit sticks. It was named after the Japanese uh, onomatopoeic word pokiri, which is supposed to resemble the sound of the snack being cracked. Oh. So it's, yeah, like a little biscuit stick, and then it's covered in chocolate. But they got a bunch of different flavors. They got strawberry. Yeah, and, you know. I remember seeing the strawberry in there. Yeah, they had they had a lot of different flavors. Yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. They're good. And they're dangerous because it's just like this thin little stick. So, you know, you, you eat the thing in like two bites. Next thing you know, you eat the whole box. Mm, yeah, I'd have to eat the whole box before I got home. That's easy. Yeah. I could easily be done. Pocky. Chocolate Pocky. Strawberry's good, I'm sure. The strawberry flavored Kit Kats from Japan. Those are good. Oh, I never had that. Those are real good. I remember I, I had strawberry quick. You ever have strawberry quick? Oh, yeah. Different. This is a different kind of strawberry taste, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's all... It's, it's more like a strawberries and cream mm-hmm. flavor, the Japanese uh, strawberry stuff. Ah, I like that, though. Yeah, no, it's like, good. You know, like some of my favorite dessert is strawberry shortcake. Yeah, that's pretty good. Whole Foods has a really good one. I'm not big on whipped cream, though. Mm, yeah, I like I love the fresh whipped cream. Uh, yeah, not with cake. Yeah, with the nice short cake. Mm. No, I'm a buttercream guy. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I, I'm not big on that kind of frosting. Yeah, no, I don't like I don't like whipped cream on my cake. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I, on the I, side, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you could put it on top, but I don't want that that to be the main. Like, if I show up to a birthday party and they got a cake with whipped cream on it, I'm leaving disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'm I'm just the opposite. I mean, usually like the, the frosting, I'll scrape it off. Oh, my God. No. I don't know. I you got to go to the Italian bakery, get the, you know, sheet cake with the yeah. buttercream frosting, rose, you know, the roses on there. Yeah. That's where it's at. No, um, the the set my number two frosting would be like a cream cheese icing. Yeah, that's basically buttercream with just some with cream cheese in it. Yeah, um, it's, I like the sort of tautness of it. Yeah, it cuts through the. Allie doesn't doesn't like buttercream. Yeah, um, you know my wife's been bringing home for me, uh, but. Uh, this, this is what my wife does. She brings home, like, these desserts and sweets and stuff for me. And then I eat them, 
And she busts like, your balls. Yeah, like what? Well, you're eating too many sweets. Well, like what do you expect? Then don't buy them. So she's been bringing home these things of tiramisu. Like, man, this is good. It's like, the, what what was in there? There was this, I, and I had to use all my willpower this morning not to eat this. What'd she bring home from Sickles? Like this apple fritter dumpling kind of mm. thing. And man, I was so I'm having my coffee this morning. I wanted to eat that thing so badly. Yeah, that'll ruin your whole day. Yeah. It's good going in, but then it's like <laughs> you're ready to fall asleep by the time you get to the yeah. shop. Yeah. So. That's like around Christmas time when you eat Christmas cookies in oh, the morning. Yeah. yeah. So chances are that there's not going to be any dessert waiting for me tonight. So I, I'm definitely going to have to grab something with the Drano. And uh, you're going to fit right in in Keensburg like an yeah. addict. Yeah. Getting my Drano and my uh, my Pocky. Got to get my fix on the way home so yeah. my wife doesn't find out. Exactly. Yeah, too bad I don't have any coffee left. That would have been perfect. Well, Dunkin' Donuts right next door. Yeah, the, the Dunkin' Donuts coffee is disappointing. I mean, it's okay during the afternoon, like when you just need a little pick-me-up. But, like, now I'd want it for the flavor. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not... A, not big on the flavor of the Dunkin' Donuts coffee. No, it's like watery. Yeah, and um, I'd just be disappointed. I'd just go for straight sugar, no chaser. Get like one of those Starbucks Frappuccinos out of the fridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those oh, pretty man. Good. I'm going to have to like hide all the debris, right? Like, because I'll be... <laughs> just throw it out the window on the way home. <laughs> you know I hate littering. Right so into like you. the creek. I mean, but, uh, yeah, we hate litterers. So. Well, we just ticked over an hour, so we better package schedule for delivery tomorrow. Oh, got something coming. Um, All right. So, yeah, that's all we got for you. We'll see you next week. We got John Peters next week. Oh, all right. So tell your friends. Shop tour. Yep. Take care. As always, Rob and I thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. If you want to help support the podcast, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can join our Patreon, or you can use one of our affiliate links in the podcast description. Um, again, we appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in. 